But to, uh, to give us a bit more of an in-depth background into propaganda, banking, and a sample of her incredible knowledge, please welcome the, the, the gracious and the brilliant and beautiful Miss Sydney White. Oh, did I get that wrong? Gracious, brilliant, beautiful? I got that right. I got that right. Whatever you want to say, I'll give you the ten bucks later. So, yeah, my name is Sydney White. And uh, I just want to add something to the song about the sheriff and the deputy. Uh, being around for a long time and having a lot of friends in both communities, yeah, he didn't shoot the deputy. The deputy's always black. The sheriff's always white. That was Bob Marley's little dig in there, okay? Uh, now, the point is that we are under corporate rule. And as Wendy mentioned, both Jefferson and Mussolini agreed on this point. Mussolini said, you might as well call fascism corporatism because that is what it is. Also, there was a novel written in 1935 by Sinclair Lewis, who was an American literary giant, and you had to sign to get this book, and you had to wait 10 days, put your name on a list. And the book was a book he wrote in 1935, and it was called It Can't Happen Here. And in the book, Americans were escaping with the U.S. and coming up to Canada because the U.S. had become a corporate fascist state. So if you can get your hands on this book, it might be on Amazon.com. Somebody said it might be. It's called It Can't Happen Here by Sinclair Lewis, and he knew in 1935 what was going to happen. And in the book, these people are called the Corpos. That's what they are called in the book in 1935. So this has always been in the works. And I hate to disillusion people about Mackenzie King. However, he was in Rockefeller's pocket and he was elected on the promise that he would have our country produce its own money interest free at 100% money. When he got elected, he reneged on that under the Rockefeller influence and he cut it down to 50%. Well, what usually happens, happened. If you give a corporation an inch, it's going to take a mile. So now, instead of producing even 50% of our money interest-free, our wonderful eunuchs in the government have decided that instead of borrowing from our public bank, and the charter is still the same, they have decided they are going to borrow on our behalf, without our vote, from their private banking friends. So now, two-thirds of your taxes do not come back to you in the form of infrastructure, education, hospitals. Two-thirds go to pay their private banking friends nothing but interest. Unnecessary interest. So if you want to know how the corporations got such power that they have today. They got it because the first privatization, meaning robbery, was the privatization of our money supply. And when the privatization of your money supply comes about, you can't do anything without their control because you are under debt. And you all know damn well that if you owe somebody a debt and you say to them, I'm going to take a holiday or I'm going to get married or whatever, they say to you, fine, but how are you going to keep paying my debt? You owe me big time. So the control and the slavery comes through the debt. Now both American, the American Revolution was about debt. Lincoln had interest-free money, and he promised if he was re-elected, he'd have it again. And the banks would not be uh, supplying printed money to the government at interest, so he was killed. And Jackson, and if he was alive today, I'd marry this guy. Jackson had two terms in the White House. When he left, blacks and whites sobbed in the streets because he said, I'm getting rid of the private bank borrowing. He took all the money 
the U.S. people's money out of the private bank and put it into state banks. And when Jackson was president, two terms, that's the only time in American history they had a surplus. And he parceled it out to every state and he said, use it for infrastructure. That is the only time the U.S. never had a debt. When Kennedy was in, he produced over four billion United States dollars that did not go through the Fed. And that was one of the biggest reasons he was assassinated. If you come to my lectures in the fall, I'm starting Monday, October 6th, it's a free course. You will learn all about the history you never learn in school. Because who funds the universities? Banks, corporations, drug corporations. Who is Codex? 18 drug corporations. That's who Codex is. And they would have none of their power to oppress people if the banking corporations, which are the largest on the globe, had not taken over the production of our money. Now, this is what happens. Governments can produce, print their own money. They have the right to, they've always had the right to, since kings have the right to produce coins. The coins never had interest on them, but what we do today is the height of insanity, and even Rothschild. They have contempt for the people because they know how stupidly they've done this. Rothschild said, one of them about a hundred years ago, can you think of anything more absurd than that a country with limitless resources and the intelligence of its people goes to a private banking family on bended knee begging for credit. Oh, give us credit. Don't say that our country's gone bankrupt. Please, please, we'll do anything you want. That's why they have nothing but contempt for these governments. Most of the governments on the globe now allow private banking families to print their new money. Now, this is what they do. They buy some really fancy paper, maybe a thousand dollars for the paper. The government needs money to pay its debts, maybe put up a few new hospitals. But instead of just issuing their own money and credit, these people, these eunuchs I call them, go to the private banking families and bring them Canadian bonds or American bonds. They give them bonds representing our resources. If they need 50 billion from the bankers, and this is a crime in itself, they bring them the bonds, 50 billion, the bankers take the bonds, they have the bonds. They print 50 billion in the numbers on the really nice paper, and then they go back to the government and they say, there you go, now you can go pay your debts. However, you have to pay interest on this money we've just printed. This money is nothing but numbers. You have to start paying interest on that now, and that's our debt. Do you know that 95% of our $600 billion debt, one, it's to the bankers, and 95% of it is compound interest. It's all compound interest. We really only owe 5% of the debt. Do you understand how you're being ripped off now? How can we have control of our country when they have control of the purse strings? They're going to cause a recession now. They want one. That means no jobs, people losing their homes, and wow, lots of extra young men for those wars that they are planning all over the world. That's planned. Depressions are planned. If I own the purse strings, I can have a depression, recession, war, anything I want. Now, that's how all the other corporations got the power to do to you what they're doing. So now, I'm going to give you a, just a few little details of who's going to make money on this super highway. I want you to know who's involved in this highway that will be coming from Mexico through Texas, where they're all getting their guns out now and having huge protests because their land's all being taken. Coming right up through the middle of the states, right up through the middle of Canada.
uh, possibly all.